Hello. You're a computer science student or a mathematics student and you consider to take discrete mathematics as a course. Um, or maybe you're a student from chemistry or physics. Um, and in this welcome video, I would like to um, tell you what this course is about and how it will be run to help you to make an informed decision. So let me start with the content of the course. So the content will be about the basics of uh, discrete mathematics or combinatorics, and we will cover five subjects. The first is partial orders. So these are relations where elements are comparable, but not everyone is comparable, and we still have transitivity. And we uh, prove some structural theorems about those. Then we go to counting. Uh, as an example, we have some formula that gives us estimates on uh, how large the binomial coefficient n over k is. Um, this is not my favorite part of combinatorics, but you use it uh, in all over combinatorics, so uh, it's good that we co will cover that. Um, the third topic will be graphs, so we will have uh, structural properties about graphs, Eulerian graphs, when a graph is connected, um, and just basic terminology. For instance, this graph here is two connected, but if you remove two vertices, it gets split into two, that's why it's not three connected. And then um, graphs actually play a huge role in discrete mathematics. We will go to trees, so the trees are these graphs without cycles. They have lots of different definitions. And even if you don't care about trees, um, they're really important for all of graph theory in general. Um, then we go to planar graphs. And planar graphs uh, are those graphs that I can draw in the plane. Um, they are four colorable. Um, we have a formula, Euler formula for the number of, that gives us a relation between the edges, number of edges, number of vertices, and number of faces of this graph. Um, just to name a few highlights of what this will be about. Um, okay, that's what a discrete mathematics is about. And it somehow is a subject that, that um, has influence in all other areas of mathematics. And it, these objects you will also encounter in all over the place in uh, computer science. So for instance, neural networks are just specific graphs uh, with certain properties. Um, if you take this course as a computer science student, then um, you may have some trouble with the prerequisites of elementary proofs, but you can catch, typically students can catch up on those. Uh, so if you take elementary logic or logic one in the computer science uh, uh, part, then you should be set. Um, mathematics students should be set on the prerequisites anyways. Um, then the second prerequisite are basic algorithms. Um, there, typically, the mathematics students have more trouble and the computer science students find it easy uh, because they took some algorithm classes. Uh, but also for the mathematics students, um, those we will cover in the first lecture and may things may come a little bit more difficult to you. But no worries, you will be able to catch up on those during the course. But uh, we will not provide um, materials for this or cover it in a lecture but you're supposed to cover this in self-study. Um, so the CS students typically say that they found this course very hard, and the mathematics students typically say they found the course fairly easy. Um, however, the, there are two students who failed, and those students were mathematics students. So, yeah, I mean, you can always compensate by putting in, in hours of work, right? Um, so there will be grading, and the grading will be quite diverse. There will be homework assignments. We will have in-class multiple choice questions. We will ask you to write some reflections to set yourself goals. And the main part of your grade will be dependent on a midterm uh, and a final exam. Um, and yeah, then you divide those points and so on. Um, I want to say a little bit about the exam. So we will have knowledge questions. So they are already ready. So you can look at them. They, you should find them in Caracal. Um, and we will pick two randomly out of those. So you can just study them. Um, so that makes this exam 
somewhat easy. And then there are two creative questions. They are somewhat easier, but it makes it more difficult because uh, you don't know them upfront. And there you have to do things that were not part of the lecture. And so there will be four questions. You pick three out of them, and, and on those you will be graded. Um, so that's what the exam will be like. Last year we had only knowledge questions, but the some mathematicians didn't feel challenged enough. Um, regarding the homework, we will use peer grading. Um, only 20% of your final grade will be due to peer grading. However, we will give a lecture on how to give feedback. We will provide a model solution. Um, we have some mechanism for you to complain in case things are not good, and there will be checks by the teachers to, to see if the peer grading is okay. Um, there are two purposes to use peer grading. The one is um, it provides uh, an interesting learning experience, which we think is very valuable uh, to the students. Not every student uh, appreciates it because it's extra work, but um, yeah, research, research shows that uh, students learn more uh, from the assignments if, if they get figuring, uh, assuming they will receive, they will also see a correct answer, and we will make sure you can see a correct answer. But also, um, this gives us the opportunity, or this gives opportunity for you, for us gives more homework, and for the students to have more practice uh, opportunities and to get more feedback from uh, how good they do the things. So again, research shows uh, if you want to learn mathematics, you need to practice a lot and you need to get feedback. As teachers, we cannot provide as much feedback. I also want to show you some statistics. So I'm really happy with those statistics. So um, um, 71 students showed up and 32 passed. Obviously, I would like more students to pass. But if you look at the details after, you know, the students who didn't uh, satisfy the prerequisites, 43 students remained um, and then we have a 75% of those students passed. And among those students who actually took the final exam, uh, you know, we have like more than 90% of the students passed. Ideally, I would like to have 100% of the students passing, um, but the course does require some prerequisites and yeah, people who do not satisfy those prerequisites, it's difficult to do something about. Um, yeah, some more statistics. So we have actually uh, a quite a large number of people getting a 10. Um, that's due to the form of the exam. So that was last year, um, where uh, you can prepare for every question. Um, now we have also some creative questions. So you cannot anymore prepare for every question, but still um, you, you can prepare for half of the questions or two thirds of the questions uh, if you want to. Uh, so that should be, make you able to pass the course if you study sufficiently. Um, what bothers me a little bit is that some students really spent a lot of hours, so they may have better not take the course because apparently they did not satisfy the progress for the course. But it's also uh, nice to see that despite the fact that the course was lots of learning, people did manage to spend few hours and pass the course, even with a 10. But so if you, your mathematic maturity is high enough, you can pass this course. And they did not know that uh, the material in advance because I asked them. Um, yeah, and what makes this course difficult is that the uh, uh, the level of the students varies a lot in the course. But yeah, we aim for the computer science students, and if a mathematics student finds it too easy, uh, that's them. I also wanted to say that uh, so if you see these numbers here from Caracal. Uh, those were mainly filled in by mathematics students. Um, okay, and with this, uh, I hope I gave you some impression on what the course will be. Uh, we will closely follow the book by Jirka Matuszek, um, actually one-to-one. -one. Uh, so if you want to have a look at that, then be my guest. Bye.